this is Sam. I'm doing my numerical method spring 2020 project. My project is on the Lorenz system, chaos theory. I'm gonna show you my code now. I use the Rangakata method. So I'm gonna clear out my stuff real quick. All right. Final project description, summary of chaos and Lorenz system. Summary of Rangakata Felberg method, governing equation description, initial conditions, initial position, as well as parameters for all five solutions or all five systems that we're going to model. Those parameters are then thrown into the matrix. The matrix is broken into vectors for parameters per solution initial time, max time, step size, lower bound, upper bound, initial step, tolerance. Those are all thrown into this function which gives us the position vectors as well as the error vector time vector and step vector this function is wrong cut a felberg i call it on all five sets of parameters in order to get five solutions this is what that function looks like starts with the step scale equal to 0 0.08 this keeps the value of the step from blowing up error holder tolerance is converted to tolerance per unit length counter, reallocate space. Uh, the main part of this code is a for loop inside a while loop. I runs from one to five. While loop runs while T is less than T max. So when it's greater than T max, it breaks. Inside the for loop calls Rungakutta method on the time, position, step, and parameters. And it returns the new time new position and error calculation, relative error between the order methods, different order methods. So this is what the Rangakata uh, file looks like. These A values are coefficients for the intermediate K values um, as they're used to approximate the future K values or the next K values. These C values are used to are used as coefficients to calculate the step between the k values. These b values are the higher order scheme the coefficients to calculate the next position and the higher order scheme using the k values. b star is the lower order scheme. So this is the fourth order, this is the fifth order. It's the same thing, but this is a lower order. d is the difference between the coefficients for the higher and the lower order. All of these are named according to the butcher table for the Runge-Cutta Felberg method. These H values are DT times C values as described earlier, and the K values are calculated by calling the Lorenz function on time, position, and parameters. As you can see, time changes as it goes through the calculations as well as the position. Position is approximated in these ways using the A values and the previous K values. Parameters stay the same through all of them. This is what the Lorenz function looks like. It's the governing equations, returns the slope as a function of position and parameters. It's a vector, three by one vector, whoops. So then we step in time, step in space using the B star and the K values, and then we calculate the error using the D and the K values should be noted that the first number in the A is the K value being calculated and the second number in the A is the which K value it's a coefficient for. Back to RKF, X check is equal to the norm of X. Check to make sure that the step is below, is above the tolerance. If it's not, we break the for loop. X check is assigned to X temp. Error temp is the norm of the error. Scale is calculated by multiplying the step scale by the tolerance times tolerance per unit length times the length divided by the error. And this is all to the one fifth. Should be the one half, but my scheme doesn't work unless three is, or uh, the denominator is three or greater. So it's five because that works the best. This conditional checks to make sure that the uh, step is above that scale factor or below the scale factor rather. These are all checks, um, upper bound check, lower bound check, and error check. Um, if any of them are true, the loop breaks. 
this matrix records the position as a function of time, step as a function of time, step in time, time as a function of time. And then we increment the counter. And if the counter goes above a million, we break the while loop. Finally, we take that matrix and we send it out as vectors for the different coordinate axes. Now return to Lorentz system. So after we calculate the solutions, we have these filters. These are used because we pre-allocate space and it's used to get rid of all the zeros that are unused space. We then check all systems for chaos using a function called check for chaos, which takes the parameters as inputs and it evaluates these conditions. And if they're true, then chaotic is true. And if they're false, then chaotic is false. We then use these if statements. If chaotic is false, we calculate an equilibrium. So this is calculating equilibriums for non-chaotic systems. And then we graph the results. And I'm going to save you the time of going through all this code. It's pretty long. It's just labels, axes, uh, titles, plot, subplots, stuff like that. So then we have the conclusion. So now I'm going to run it. It takes a few seconds. I was going to do a plot of initial condition versus equilibrium with colors, um, but I didn't have the time to, to figure that out. Maybe I still will. Took about 12.4 seconds. And now I'm gonna show you the, uh, the graphs that it created. So this graph is a chaotic solution. Um, as you can see, it's a projection into the coordinate, at, uh, coordinate planes. And I also graphed step size versus time. And it oscillates at what appears to be a partially regular rate, um, but it also does seem random in many aspects too. So there is some pattern to this chaos, but it's mostly chaotic. All right, I'm going to go on to the next one. So this one uh, is a pretty system. It loops around a little bit. As you can see, it is non-chaotic and it is plotted with the equilibrium in the title. The step size versus time increases as time increases, and this is shows the fact that as the uh, solution approaches the equilibrium, the error begins to get small between the orders, and so the step size increases. I'm going to show you the next one. This is another solution, pretty interesting shape. I like hot spirals in all three projections into the coordinate planes. This one drops off because at this point, the step goes above the step scale and so it drops down to the minimum step scale. It's my guess about what's going on there. Another solution, this one spirals around a bit more before heading into its equilibrium. All equilibriums are based on the parameters rather than the initial conditions, which is something that's mentioned in my analysis. Finally, another chaotic system. This one has a nice butterfly shape and another oscillation for the uh, step size versus time. Got one more graph to show you, and it is the 3D graphs. So these are interesting because you can see how this system would actually move in time. Um, they're all very pretty and nice to look at. They look kind of like galaxies. Um, that's all I have for you. I appreciate your time. Thanks.